Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and pick up where we left off. We're 1-0 uh, at the moment, playing uh, Bram Thomas's Red Deck Wins. Let's go ahead and queue it up. Alright, so we got a bit of a curve here. Um, I think we'll go ahead and keep this. Being that we're on the play. Oh, mulliganing first. White green, so we're probably looking at Celestia tokens. So we'll go ahead and drop our other Soul Scar here. So we're gonna, we're very likely gonna have to sideboard to go wide against this. It's very interesting. Not overly comfortable with that ramp, so we'll just fucking deal our three damage and swing out. Put him on a clock. So I'm waiting to see what it is that he's uh, he's ramping this energy for, because he mulliganed for a hand that had two of these. All right, Shalai's not bad. Yep, I think we'll double chain Whirler. Swing with our free one. And that's pretty much game if he doesn't have a combat trick. So we're going to play around. Get there, guy. Oh, pretty good. So I was about to say we're gonna have to play around. Uh... Play around some of the wreckage, but since he went ahead and used to cast out, we don't have to worry about that. We actually haven't gained a lot of information about this deck, so sideboarding might be a little interesting. So all we've seen was Energy Ramp and Shalai with White Green, so I think what we're going to take and do is drop one Hazard, one... Uh, Kari Zev, both Kari Zevs. We're gonna bring in Glory Bringers and another Chandra. Additionally, we'll drop two Lightning Strikes for two Abrades, or for another Abraid rather, uh, to round us off at four. I'm debating on the vehicle for Shalai. Alright, so one more lightning strike for Aether Sphere Harvester. 
and probably magma spray. We'll see how this goes. So because we still haven't seen his mechanic, um, we're going to try and go high risk, high reward here. And worst case scenario, we, we go ahead and lose out to what it is that he's trying to ramp to. Yeah, we have to mulligan this. He's, uh, he ships it as well. Uh, that's pretty much the definition of high, high risk, high reward. Ramp. So I swing here because regardless of whether he blocks it or not, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, being that he's ramp, he's inclined to not block with his Land of War Elves. But if he does, we're just hurting his ramp. So, so bringing in that fourth of Braid was a, uh, a solid plan. So let's take... I actually want to take and swing out here. And we'll just sorcery speed a braid. No, we'll, we'll hold. Perfect land drop. He's really letting that Bomac Courier get out of hand. I did leave it exposed by tapping out here. But it allows me to play a little bit more on curve. The other option would be to play Soul Scar Mage and uh, swing out and pass. Uh, which may have, you know, may could have been proven to, to be the better option. So in this case, we go ahead and swing out. Depending on what he does here, uh, we can very well cripple him. So he goes ahead and leaves it. So we'll let damage resolve. And then we'll force him to do something about Bomat Courier. Nice pickup here with Oncrop and another Abrade. Walking Ballista for three is pretty good. So we'll actually just take and Abrade right now. I 
then we'll on Ankara up and swing out. Putting him at four, and that's getting pretty close to game right there. If he doesn't have something that he can utilize his, his six available mana with, uh, he's going to have a really hard time. Uh, we do have a dead hand at the moment. So Lyra Dawnbringer is really good here. We have to get some removal for this immediately. Oh, there it is. So we'll go ahead and exert and swing everything. Alright, there we go. And the reason why we do that is in the event that he uh, has some some sort of an eruption or some trick play. Alright, so that's uh that's match two down. And we'll go ahead and queue right up into match three. So we're on the play. This is a bad hand. This is really risky. We could very easily be shut down here if we don't draw into a mountain. This is a very high risk hand. So one white out. Um, hmm, it's very interesting. Vampires? Oh, this might be Esper Benalia or Esper Knights. So I think our ideal play is this first strike. That is first strike. So our ideal play is to just deal our three damage and swing out. We don't have any enchantment removal uh, for his sagas, so we have to be very careful about him uh, establishing any kind of board presence. Uh, we want to we want to clear the board every shot that we have. And, and there's there's an enchantment that we don't have a uh, removal for. So I'm tempted to actually swing out with Bowmat this turn, but I think we won't. I think we'll just uh, swing our Karis out. having two lands here is a little limiting, especially for things like Goblin Chain Whirler. Uh, so I think what we might actually do is swing out and try to generate a card with a bow mat. Dump this hand and see what we get. Okay, well, we'll just throw Kari's out. He does now have the option to double block and kill her. Uh, 
So we really need this this mountain for this chain whirler. I'm interested to see interested to see if he uh, if he swings out here or not. That's that's a mistake. So, this is going south very rapidly. We'll have to go ahead and pass. It's interesting that we only just now see the, uh, the black mana. Curious why he didn't uh, didn't hard a cure in there. Well, this is pretty much game at this point. Uh, us taking that very high risk mulligan uh, kind of sealed the deal for us there. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't have anything to uh, really deal any kind of removal here. Now we can goblin chain whirler and mitigate a little bit. opponents is still just two damage off of lethal if necessary. So a little, a little too late on that, but let's see what we have. We kind of have to hazard it here. Yeah, so we're going to hazard it and swing Soul Scar. And we can still block with a uh, chain wheeler and courier. Now oh, what am I saying? Lyra has flying. All right, so P and LR comes in. Uh, a fourth of braid comes in. We will take one Chandra, two Magma Sprays. Uh, as far as things to drop, we'll drop one Hazaret. Um, probably going to have to drop two on crops because we don't need that style of board control. Um, let's actually drop one Abrade and one Earthshaker Kenra. Two Earthshaker Kenra. How's our curve look? Still good enough. And let's actually bring in Aether Sphere Harvester over, uh, over the, that extra Chandra there. put ourselves in a rather poor position on that first match by not pitching that you know initial draw seven mainly for stuff like this like we're now in a pretty 
pretty bad position. Uh, like this is this is not a great hand. And we're on the play since we lost. So I expect Kari to get fatal pushed. So let's go ahead and swing out. So we can anticipate uh, a creature with three power coming out here. History of Benale is also really good. Yeah, I, I really like Chandra here. Two two to block, or keep the the one three to block the two two. We could have also uh, plussed up for the double mana to play Earthshaker, uh, but being that Earthshaker is a two one and only two converted mana cost, uh, we're still really open to stuff. Uh, if uh, if he's smart here, he'll fatal push Kari Zev and then swing both into Chandra because that's basically our our way of staying in. Cast out also takes care of Chandra really well. Doesn't swing, that's interesting. So, Soul Scar Mage would be really good here. We'll go Pia for uh, going wide. And we'll swing with Kari Zev. No, we'll just go ahead and end up. So, we'll take eight. Soulscar Mage into Goblin Chain Whirler would be our ideal ideal method here. Uh, this isn't going to work. So we'll Chain Whirler and try to bait next turn. So if we want, actually, we'll swing the two of these and see what he does. We might be able to bait Shalai being dead. Nope, he was on to us. But we can still block and kill Shalai. I'm sorry, get get Shalai to block and then uh, kill her. Well, that's pretty rough. So there are no good options here. Um, let's see.
Shalai being out makes it really, really difficult to do anything here. Yeah, having to taking taking that high risk uh, hand on game one really just set us up for failure here because I definitely would have pitched game two if we were on the draw. Uh, this starting hand just wasn't very powerful; it didn't allow us to go uh, as wide as early as we needed. So that was that was definitely the the supreme misplay there. One going in. solid hand. So our opponent's running is it. So this is either is it wizards with a heavy removal and counter package. Oh, Grixis. This is Grixis control. So we we lose our braid here. Oh, he takes the shock. He wants us to use the abrade against him. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and... I think we actually just Earthshaker Kenra and then swing. I don't really care to get the shock back until I can cast it at instant speed. Which means, like, I, I want to get the prowess value off of it when I do. So we'll drop uh, the Soul Scar Mage this turn. You know, Fatal Push, phenomenal play there. So we'll drop Soul Scar this turn, um, and then a braid after. Crypt of the Eternals. So that's interesting. Let's take... Let's hold our braid until we see what we get. Alright, so those are revealed. How's the interface work for this? Um... We'll take action on that. I don't care about that. And I don't care about that. And now we'll upgrade Freebooter.
So we'll go ahead and shock him in the face. We'll sacrifice the Kenra. Not enough to eternalize yet, but we will go ahead and swing out. And getting a mountain drop here uh, allows us to eternalize in the, you know, our next turn. And that should seal the game away. Kiteil does nothing for him here. Uh, it does give him another blocker, but and that's perfect. So that's game. So we'll go ahead and internalize. We'll choose Kiteil. Yeah. And opponent scoops. So being that this is a uh, Grixis, it seems a little control. Uh, we'll go ahead and scavenger grounds. Um, we will glory bringer. Bring in our fourth of braid. Uh, we will drop. All hazards. A lightning strike. Yeah, I like this. Uh, if we lose this match, we'll bring in P and LR. opponent's debating pretty hard. Thinking on his sideboard pretty difficult there. So our curb is really low here, but I think I still like this. I really like the art on these mountains. Like for for basic half art lands, these are pretty nice. So having a lightning strike and a braid is really nice here because it'll allow it to deal with uh, whatever the kite sail takes away. Oh, and he doesn't. He doesn't do it. Uh, so we will actually uh, Earthshaker here and just swing out. So that's our perfect uh, lightning strike target. I'm debating on leaving us open with the bow mat, but no, I think I'll just take the lightning strike and uh, swing out again. <laughs> when it delays like that, I always wonder if it didn't work. I'm like, hold on, what did I not read on this? Another explorer. Oh, 
hostage taker or something to, uh, oh, oh, you pitched it, okay. So here's what I want to do here. I want a bow mat and a braid. Another one? <sighs> so I think we'll just play out. fatal push, this should be game. Oh, so he fatal pushes the Kenra. You should have held on to that. And opponent scoops. So, 3-1. So, the nice thing about this, so, uh, if you haven't played Competitive Constructed before, it costs 1,000 gold to enter. Um, at two wins, you, uh, you break even. Uh, well, really, you actually come out a little bit ahead, because you do get three cards as well. Uh, so you get 1,000 gold and three cards back. At, uh, at five, we get 2,103. Um, so, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll run, uh, you know, a Tier 1 or a Tier 2 deck, uh, rack up a couple of five win, uh, five win runs, uh, and then I'll actually drop in like a uh, jank combo and other unseen you know mechanics, and uh, see what I can get away with. Oftentimes it doesn't work out, but if I don't break even, I, I basically use tier one decks to uh, afford my gold into you know anything else. So we'll go ahead and do one more here. Niso Villar. So we're on the draw here. This is not a great hand. Go ahead and keep. Being that we're second to act, Bowmat might just be dead for us. White tokens. So he will block the Bowmat, but we draw into another Bowmat. So I'm actually okay with just swinging out here. tokens. This is probably Esper. We might just... So, Minister Inquiries is really interesting. 
This is Blue White God Pharaoh's gift. So I really don't want to blow my a braid here. So I'll just toss the uh, bow mats and then end my turn. I want to save a braid for uh, Gate to the Afterlife or something of that regard. Or you know, the actual God Pharaoh's gift itself. So I'm fine with losing one bow mat, uh, but I do need to get a bow mat engine, you know, up and running. So he pitches a binding and a visor of many faces. I'd really like to pick up uh, our Chandra here. So when he blocks Womack Courier, we'll actually take and uh, sack it and ditch these two for something with a little more gas. basically just traded. He still hasn't pitched it. He might have one in his hand, but he would have discarded it with Guardian of Wits. Or Champion of Wits, rather. So I'm going to assume he has his refurbish already. So does he get it? Nope. So he tosses a cat, uh, which he's probably going to go ahead and bomb here. Yep.
So being able to internalize this Earth Shaker, put a little bit more pressure on. Uh, really, pitching that a breed was a bad move because uh, we definitely confirmed that it was God Pharaoh's gift once the uh, Champion of Wits came out. Well, Mountain does it, and we go ahead and scoop. Alright, so here we drop all Hazards. Uh, we bring in our other Chandra. We bring in PNLR. Um, we do drop uh, one, two on crops. Yeah, two on crops uh, for our last abrade and a fight with fire. So he might not actually be God Pharaoh's gift, he may be regening with the other method. Or resurrecting, graveyard, digging, exhuming, exhuming with the other method. So I expect we had a little bit of control sideboarded in. Uh, he probably brought in four negates. Uh, this is a decent hand. We we have to keep this. Basically, if he had blocked there, we were going to drop the uh, the bigger body of Chain Whirler. I think we'll actually just drop the, uh, the Earth Shaker here and call it. I don't know what my opponent sideboarded in, so I was debating on leaving it open and not overextending. But being that he only had two mana available, I figured I might as well.
Well, at least our opponent seems to be getting equally as mana screwed as we are. Uh, PNLR is pretty good here. Um, I think we'll Pia and swing out. We're open to seal away. Oh, he didn't have it. So obviously we choose uh, uh, Chain Roller here. And I guess our artifacts. So I think ideally we will Soul Scar on crop, swing out. We shouldn't have any problems from here. Because we'll just plus up Chandra next turn. Yeah, so he goes ahead and fills the board, but we're just going to drop Chandra and plus up. Oh, there's our other Chandra. So, nothing felt dead at any point, so I think we'll actually just keep what we have. Uh, we will actually bring in a scavenger, scavenger ground, uh, grounds and just drop a mountain for it, um, just in case we get the option. So, opponents on the play. And he pitches. I think we'll keep for card advantage. These mountains are not doing anything for us. Uh, we'll at least get a body out there, even if it comes in taps. Just add the two. Today's my lucky day. And shock. And swing out. And if he doesn't bounce our next turn, uh, he actually seems to be getting mana screwed pretty good here. Uh, so he doesn't bounce her. So we'll go ahead and exile the top card. And yeah, we'll we'll play that.
Pitches a refurbish. Oh, this is gonna hurt. So we go ahead and chain whirler and swing. right on time too unfortunately loyalty counters are state based so when I do get her back it's back at four uh, so what we'll do is chain willer does he have lifelink? no he's just flying Okay. and we'll swing out with those two Looking a little rough for him. I should have actually swung with Earthshaker to get him to block so I could eternalize this turn. Oh, I can still eternalize this turn. And I get my sweet Chandra back. Appreciate you, guy. So we'll go ahead and plus two. Yep. Or plus one. You're going down. Uh, we will cast Bomat Courier. We will eternalize Earthshaker Kenra. So I expect him to play his Angel here and pick up Chandra again. Yep, here we go. So we will drop our mountain, play our hand out, swing out. Sack Bowman. Get our card. Sweet, sweet scavenger grounds. So this is gonna be good. I was hoping to do that before we managed to get that off, but oh well. Shaker doesn't really do anything for us right now, so we will swing. Yeah, we'll swing out. It's an interesting choice. And we'll go ahead and Earth Shaker. Not having any kind of enchantment removal is uh, <laughs> really rough.
Interesting that he swings there with his flyer, knowing that Glorybringer is in our package. Uh, so what does he have in here? Nothing of interest at the moment, so we'll just go ahead and Soul Scar. Oh, I didn't mean to swing that. Whatever. I don't know why it didn't let me, uh... Maybe I clicked it too soon. So he pitches another cat. Well, that's pretty much game if we don't pull a... Uh Actually, at 17, I don't think we have any single draw to uh, alleviate this, especially not with authority of the councils out. And that doesn't do it. Well, that's game. I wish it would let me see what I uh, what I put in there. I'm curious. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and review. I should have put glory bringers in there. I don't know if I did or not. Overwhelming splendor. I have never seen this played. Huh. It's really interesting. Alright, so that's uh, Red Deck Wins, Competitive Constructed.